My name is Rachel Becker and this is our presentation of the brewery industry. Our group name is Sierra Nevada and right now we'll be talking to you about um, Define the Industry. Um, we will, oh so sorry about that, um, our industry classification number is 31210 with a category code of 120 um, and um, two companies comprise the total market share of the brewery industry and they are um, Anheuser-Busch and Miller and Coors Brewery Industries and they make up 84.5% of the total market share and here um, I'm going to hand you off to Christiana Orla with Growth and Economy. All right, so despite the economy being in a recession, we're still seeing a growth and the brewing company is still staying strong. From 2006 until 2011, we saw a growth of about 0.04% with a consumption of about 25.7 gallons per capita. The consumption forecast is expected to rise an average of 0.18 annually in the next five years, which means that the revenue will also be increasing. So they predict that growth to be an annual rate of 1.1% which um, over the next five years to reach about $61.2 billion. So with the economy, um, Americans are the largest target market of the brewing industry. So consuming about an average of 30 gallons ev um, for every American over 21. So though we are going through a recession, um, like I said, the beer industry is still staying strong with an annual revenue of about $24.5 billion annually. Um, some of the things that have affected the brewing industry, however, include the price of wheat, which is growing at about 2.2%, and also people are now more health conscious, so they're going to be choosing lighter beers, um, looking at more of the ingredients and the calories, while other people have switched over to wine instead of the beer. Um, the brewing industry helps support the economy in many different ways. Not only does it provide over 1 million jobs for Americans, but it also provides a tax revenue of about four point, or $44 billion annually to federal, state, and local governments. So now off to Melissa Valco for um, the regulatory forces. One of the strongest regulatory forces in the brewing industry is managed on the state government level. Since the prohibition was repealed in 1933, there has been a three-tier system set up to separate manufacturers from distributors and retailers. This is believed to create a sense of checks and balances within the industry, as well as reduce the possibilities of monopolies in the industry. Next, Corey is going to talk about the technology within the industry. Hi, I'm Corey, and although the brewing industry is considered to have a low level of techno technological development, there are two areas in the industry that are improving. The first area being uh, energy efficiency and energy consumption, which is accomplished through the use of solar energy. Um, the industry has also made uh, strides to implement compu computer, computer automated com has also made strides to computer automate most of the brewing process in the last 10 years. The next area that is advancing is, the di is distribution. More and more companies are beginning to use hybrid and electric powered fleet vehicles in order to cut costs on transportation. Um, also in the last five years, ERP software programs have been implemented in order to keep track and account for inventory more accurately. And here's Audrey with the graphics. Thank you. Though the picture of the quintessential beer drinker has always been the image of the white male between the ages of 21 and 44, now there's more and more minorities and other groups advancing on their market share. Women have over 41% of the market share in light beer and are steadily advancing to 20 to 35% of each of, of each of the other developments. Hispanics and Native Americans also have a large piece of the market but Hispanics overarch every other group in terms of exported beers. Now here's Ethan with supply chain. Hi, uh, my name is Ethan, and today I'm going to be talking about the supply chain and um, SWOT analysis for the, beer, for the brewing industry. Um, as you can see, um, as, as you heard earlier um, from uh, Melissa, the the, beer, the the supply chain for um, for distribution, a downstream supply chain, is um, has been um, divided into a three tier system, and um, 
the upstream uh, the, up, the upstream supply chain consists of um, aluminum manufacturers, glass manufacturers, um, cardboard manufacturers, cardboard and um, packaging ser services, printing services, and um, various cereal um, cereals and um, production facilities. Um, the uh, uh, alcohol um, beer is the most widely purchased um, of all alcohol, rising about 85 percent of um, all alcohol purchased um, on a uh, by volume uh, per year. Um, now I was just going to touch on um, on a few of the um, few of the major strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the brewing industry. Um, the strengths, um, as you can see, um, the lar the uh, large the, the two the two largest companies in the brewing industry have a comparatively large market share, almost almost eighty five percent of the, of the entire market share. Um, weaknesses: um, they have a they have a low product diversity um, for the for the larger for the larger production beers, and this is easily filled by um, micro and craft brewing um, niche industries. Um, as as far as opportunities, um, there's a lot of growth in international markets and um, and uh, licensing. Um, where the larger beer production facilities can take um, can take other products and manufacture them. As far as threats, um, there is a um, there's always a rising concern um, as far as uh, government regulations and um, and encroachment from um, other craft brewing industries or uh, companies. And now on to Rachel to summarize the uh, presentation. We have found that as consumers' disposable income increases, so do the purchases of microbrews, craft beers, and imported ales. The target market group for um, that brewery companies look for um, is Generation Y, and that is the people who have just recently turned 21 and are continuing to do so. And we also found that baby boomers um, are decreasing purchasing um, in decreasing their purchasing in beer. Um, while they also they are getting older and there are possible um, health concerns along with that. And um, we also um, found that the consumers have a very large say in which future products the brewery companies um, start producing. As in the big health movement that took place in the early 2000s, then brewery companies started um, answering with very um, different variations of light beers. Thank you so much. This is our presentation. And yes, thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> okay.